Hello everyone, Zelx here, and today we are finally back with another loot deck. This is Loot Rally. It is loot sword with rally elements like Monica, Agile, and Aggressive Advance. Well, you can also say this is rally sword with a loot handicap, but you know what? Let's look at this positively. So, of course, we have all our standard loot cards. We have Deep Sea, Illustrious, Tino. Storm Red and Barbaros, or this from the Condemn, backing us vault, and they are still pretty okay, decent at doing what they are supposed to do. We have new cards like Nightly Thief, Loot Generator, sending the troops helps discard any excess uh, loot cards in your hand that you don't need. And then we also have Monica, which actually enables a turn 8 OTK with this deck, or just another variant of the turn 8 OTK. I run Water of Honor here instead of some other cards because I I find the draw really useful as just a it's basically a bumpkin recruit but no one one body. And then we have Kaze here that tutors Barbaros. It's really important that you get at least one copy of Barbaros when playing this deck, since you know she basically helps you advance the loot quest for free, which is the play at least seven loot cards this match. And the earlier you get that done, the the more fun you will have. Then the rest of the list is pretty standard for a sword deck. Anyways, the idea is really simple. You ready, you play loot cards, and you try to finish the game on either on turn 7 or turn 8. Usually on turn 8, with a combination of Barbaros, Aja, and Monica's last word effect. Without further ado, I'll talk about more about this deck as the games as we play through the games. If you enjoy this sort of content, you The Moonicum for a sword deck is usually very simple. You keep your one dot, two drops, and then if you possible, you keep either a Barbaros, Maximus, or even Stormwreck Crewmate. Stormwreck Crewmate is really essential. Over here, since I secured Water of Honor and Monica, I threw away the Deep Sea Scout since she's better in the later rounds of the game rather than on turn one play. I'm up against Haven, so well, either heal or crystallize since they play. Whatever this is, if this is actually Font of Tranquility, this is actually probably Hill Haven. Since I did draw the Deep Sea Scout again, I decided just like, you know, get more Psycho in. Technically, she's a 2 mana. Draw 1, advances 1 loot. Which is okay. It's a fine end card. Fine card and all. And honestly, not that bad. Aggressive advance is used as rarely, so if actually it's a pretty decent uh, early game control card. So if you can choose to keep it, do keep it. You can help you get into some really positive traits. Like even here, even though like he managed to secure bot control, I think I'm still uh quite okay with the bot state. Staying the truth is really useful for discarding Mikael, which is something you want to invoke and not really something you want to like hard play. And with the help of Nightly Thief, you can you can easily control the early game board with uh, all the little ping damage as well of your evolve points. I mean, well, we are playing Hugh Haven, so Iluvia coming down on five isn't really a isn't really surprising. But we did get some extra loot of it. We already secured a Barbaro, so if and when we feel like it, we can choose to use it as a fusion fodder. Maximus draws 3 random followers on our deck, most likely they draw some uh, loot followers. And well, I did get 2 loot on the field, but none of them are actually good in this sense. They're just statistics as it were on turn 5, really. Well, look, they are just doing Hugh Haven things. Maybe they shouldn't have played the uh, pure flame but on on six. But you know what? I'm not gonna complain. Stormwreck first mate is uh, the one of the best cards you can have on turn six. Stormwreck with evolve means you get to play at least four loot on turn six. This accelerates your quest greatly and probably just in time for Barbaros to be active on turn seven as well. But as you. I, I only have one copy of the Barbaros for now, so actually I might I might not even be using Barbaros on turn 7. 
it's more likely that I'm going to save it for a turning OTK. So you'll be as probably expecting a Storm Wreck with a Monica play next round. In fact, Storm Wreck actually gets stronger the later into the game it goes. Even though its power scaling isn't as fast as, as other cards, but it is still a really good card. Just him with Evolve points alone is probably extra 2 damage every, every turn. And with Monika here, I actually use the Gilded Boots to actually ensure that she dies and doesn't get transformed or banished or whatever Hugh Haven might decide to run. And it's so easy, you can see how easily I actually cleared the 7-7, even though I did spend 2 mana uh, sending out Monika. Well, I did leave 1-1-1 one, one, one left over on board, but that is not a big issue. So actually one one of the things we need to watch out for with this deck is that we actually need to have a follower for us to trade into which they did play, they did get have a 3-3 tree, tree now and this actually gives us a target for Monica to trade into. One benefit of this against normal normal ready sword will probably be that you can get your OTK out on turn 8 easier but then again ready sword is way more aggressive than loot, sword, loot rally. And this is the OTK I, I was talking about with Ajao Twin Blader as well as Barbaros getting Storm, getting buffed up by Monica. And then with the free evolve, Barbaros becomes an 8-6. Eight, eight, the Twin Blader can attack twice, and this is a total of 20 damage OTK. This can get through like probably one or two wards, and it's a pretty good OTK. And this is the next one. Uh, this one time we're up against Shin Portal. If I remember correctly, this is Shin Portal. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't. This uh, this game is from quite a while back. But anyways, of course, Mulligan, you never want to keep Mikael. And we did get a pretty decent hand. This is a full hand of loot generators, meaning that I could probably get my loot quest done really, really early on. Actually, it's still on turn six. You. Probably want to play Maximus on 5, this is why having 3 copies of Maximus is really really good. For most sword decks, Maximus readies 4. Basically cheats out uh, 6 manas worth of mid followers for 5 for five mana. And for now, this is... The sen usual early game is really simple. You play cards, you get loot, and sometimes you fuse them away with your Barbaros. I did uh, really secure Barbaros here, which is really really important. Of course, uh, sometimes uh, there is another combo with this that I don't think I showcase it this game. Uh, the combo is to actually fuse, get at least 7 loot fuse before turn 8 and also have 2 copies of Dread Pirate's Flag in hand. And then you need at least 2 copies of Tidal Gunner as well. You can easily get the Dread Pirate's Flag using Barbaros. Like just 2 copies of Barbaros, 1 on turn 4, 1 on turn 7 and you'll probably get the 2 uh, Dread Pirate Strike necessary, and with the two Barbaros, you can also uh, get fuse away almost loot cards for free. So just concentrate on generating loot, and you just wait until uh, draw all your title gunners. I I can afford to be a bit more aggressive here because Shin Portal doesn't really aren't really active early game. But once Evolve them comes into play, well, they start evolving like no tomorrow. Really, like look at this. This is two revolves already, and they haven't even used an evolve point yet. Probably gonna evolve that to get Kasim out as expected. And next turn, I am gonna play General Maximus to just cheat out followers. It's like it's usually one of the best turn five days for a sword. Luckily, they are arc buff the the Machina Droid, so it just dies. And since I did get Storm Wreck, wait, what? Do I not have a loot in hand? Okay, so I don't actually have a look in hand for a Storm Rat to target, so if I had a look in hand, I would have chosen to evolve Storm Rat instead. But since I don't, well, it is what it is. Of course, now my goal is actually to rush uh, Shin Portal down. Uh, as we all know, Shin Portal has a lot of heals in the form of Shin himself. And then there's Ark, we just slowly regenerate Shin 1 hit points every turn. The reason why I'm not using my evolve points actually no right now he's using way more than me so it's not really something i'm using i 
I'm gonna probably be like saving my evolve points trying to like deny him the guaranteed heal. But that is an uh, that's a, that's another advanced game plan that even I myself don't understand why I did it. Anyways, it's turn six. Of course, our best turn six play is Stormbreak Crew mate, first mate alongside with his gang of rushers. This is uh, the rush is uh, and stats is just enough to clear the board of all followers. Like that's like three followers I cleared using only one follower and three extra mana, which is pretty good. And to prevent overdraw, of course I have to fuse that one loot away with Barbros. This did reveal some information about my hand, but it's not too it's not a critical loss of information. Since well, I'm gonna play her next turn anyways, and it's not like she's an important part of. Uh, my combo. Actually, I do have the whole combo in hand. Yeah, here I did check. I he's at eight. He's at eight evolve point evolve right now. So Shin doesn't come down this turn, but yeah, Shin doesn't come down this turn, but he can will come down next turn. And I really need to like work on killing him. I decided to go with a Tidal Gunner play because, well, 7 loot is already active. I'm not working to go face this turn. That's why I decided not to play Barbaros for the uh, enhanced, enhanced 7 Storm effect. It is not necessary. Since I believe I'm going to trade my Barbaros in anyways. Well, actually I could have done this in maybe a different way, but... But for now, I guess the ends justify the memes. I'm not dead. He he's probably has Shin. It's gonna be a tough time. Honestly, you would have thought that they would play Shin first. Well, but they played Shin anyways. This, but this does mean that my uh, Monica gets destroyed, though. Which, actually, with the with my current hand right now, is really is already prepared for alternate OTK. Only issue is that their bot is a little bit stacked. So I might have a bit of issue getting through the board, but I think I just have like just enough uh, burn damage to actually destroy both ward followers. In this case, uh, as you can see, uh, Barbaros evolve effect finish off, finishes off one ward. And what, since I have deep sea scout in hand, I actually have enough burn that actually I can clear the entire board, as well as go face for almost exact lethal I'm well it's a win and it's a win and this is it from loot sword or loot ready or whatever you want to call this anyways QR codes up top that list is also in the description below let me know your thoughts about this deck personally I find it really really fun to play well it's, it doesn't win quite as much play uh, games as I would like it to win Overall, maybe out of 5 games, I won like 2, not really a positive win rate, but for my cut, it may be my rank, but for now, it will do, is just a fun off meta if you ever want, wishes to try out. Just saying though, this hard loses to crystallize, because crystallize is way too fast and it's way too strong. Come on, side games, really? But anyways, once again, if you enjoyed this content, remember to leave a like. Leave a subscribe and thanks so much for watching. Bye bye!